I am Keely in the Mines Mechanical Engineering Machine Shop. Today we're going to be going over the different ways to mill on the mill, including side milling, facing, and um, creating a pocket in a part. So what I currently have set up over here is I've got a block, it's just over two inches long of aluminum. I want to, I've already, I've already faced off the, set, the saw cut side on the other side, flipped it over, I used an edge finder to measure how long this is, and um, now then we have our DRO, we're over two inches and we want to cut it down to two inches. If I look at where my stock is, my stock is very close. If I measure it with the calipers, we're about 30, 40 um, thou over our two inch mark. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna cut a mill. And when you're side milling, it's when you're milling the side of your part. Facing is when you're using your end mill to mill the top of your part. When side milling, it is important to consider how the part is fed into the tool. We define this in two ways, climb milling and conventional milling, which relates to the rotation of the tool and the side of the tool that the part is approaching as the table moves or feeds across the mill. Climb milling results in less wear on the tool because the chips start thick and they become thinner as the tooth cuts through the material. Climb milling has improved chip removal and results in a better finish and is the most common method used in the shop. Conventional milling has the advantage that it reduces backlash on the mill. Backlash is the play or the slop caused from wear in the worm gear on the table of the mill. Generally, if conventional milling is used, a final climb mill pass will be used to finish the face. For this exact setup, when I bring the table towards me, I'm going to be climb milling, and when I bring it away from me, I will be conventional milling. For this operation, I'm just going to turn the machine on. I have it set to, set to about 600, so where I want it to be. I'm going to raise up my Z. And I'm going to go to 2.25 in the X because I need the, my block to be 2 inches plus the radius of the edge. So I go to 2.25. And since this is such a small pass, it's a finishing pass, it doesn't matter. instead of a saw cut side I've got a nice machine finish and that is just a quick introduction to side milling. For facing we're going to um, just face off the top of this we're going to use our half inch end mill to do so. So the first thing I'm going to do is lower the, lower the table, lower the Z. And then I'm going to bring my end mill into about the middle of my part. Um, this is still locked. We do this so we can reduce errors in case it's, um, there's an inflection at any point. And what we're going to do here is we're just going to do a pecking zero. We'll go over zeroing with paper when we make our pocket. So I'm going to turn on my machine and I'm going to slowly lift up the Z until I start to see chips.
being finished, I can go up. You, typically, I'm going to go up about 10 more thou and just make sure I have a complete good finish. I'll do that off camera and we will do our pocket mill next. All right, so now that we have faced off our part, we I have put the a, a quarter inch end mill in here and we're going to make our pocket. So our pocket is in the center of our part and it's a one inch square. We're gonna go an eighth of an inch deep. Um, I also took the opportunity off camera to zero in the center. So my zero, zero point is the exact center of this square. What we're gonna start by doing is zeroing this and the Z. Instead of doing a pecking zero, like we did on our facing operation, where the depth didn't really matter, we are gonna do a paper zero. So what we do here, we're gonna grab our Z handle, we're gonna grab our piece of paper, which we know piece of paper is about three thou thick. We're gonna bring our Z up, and you move your piece of paper until it barely catches. Once it barely catches, um, there's a point where it feels snug, that's where you want to be, and you'll, I'll set my zero on my dial here to three thou, because I know that if I went three thou more, we are at zero. We can also double check this, and I'll show you how. So while I do this, okay, so now my paper is nice and snug. This is exactly where I want it to be. I'll move my handle off to the side in order to keep to take the slack out and I'm going to put it to three thou. Sometimes I have trouble with addition or subtraction, so without moving anything, I'm bringing this over here and I'm going to put it at zero. As I did that, I realized that we are going up with the table, which is the way we want to be, and so we are correct That's our, that, with that being our zero. Um, there's multiple ways to do the pocket. Some people start in the middle, uh, or you can start in the corners. For this, for our operation, and we're going to start in the middle, and we're going to machine to about, so we need to go to 0.375 in each direction, positive and negative. But instead of going to 0.375, we're going to go to 0.37 to our max depth, and then we'll take off the sides um, on our final pass. This way, that way, we don't accidentally make it too big at any point in time, because you can always remove material, you can never add it back on. So, let's hold on our machine. And I'm going to lift my Z up about 25 thou. So I'm going to go to zero. Oh, one more zero. And then I'm going to go, I'm going to go 20 thou actually. Now I have that. I'm just going to move my X.
my edges of my pocket aren't very clean, so I'm going to go back through and face them off. Um, and pocket milling or facing does take um, a more time and is a little bit more tedious, but you need it's worth the time and effort it takes. You need to make sure you take it slow in the Z and then be conscientious just not to turn too far in the wrong, wrong direction. Thank you for tagging along with us on this video today. And if you have any questions, um, please ask a TA when you come in the shop. Thank you.